Hello. Okay, now uh, we are now doing lecture three, literature review. Cluster is social science and business management. Um, you will learn two important things uh, here. Uh, you will learn what to write in literature review and you will and I will actually I will also teach you how to plan your literature review contents. Okay, all right. Um, um, some some people uh, some people ask me, uh, are there any differences between theories and past studies? Why do I separate theories and past studies when it comes to literature review? Well, some people don't separate them. Um, perhaps it's a personal choice. But in my case, I separate the theories and the past studies. Why? Because um, um, to, to me, theories talks about concepts. Uh, there will be a section in my literature review where I will, uh, um, I will present the theories by different researchers, theories by different writers. I will be discussing the concepts. I will be talking about the different models designed by previous researchers. I will be uh, presenting some of the characteristics of that theory. Okay, maybe even for certain topics, maybe even the advantages and or all the disadvantages of the topic and then i will also be talking about the issues surrounding the theories all right uh theories where where do i get these theories i can get them from books i can get them from even journal articles now even journal articles there are several types several categories there is the normal category which is very uh quite uh, familiar and maybe simple to us it's a category, uh, the kind of uh, journal articles that that reports research. Even in the abstract, you can see methodology, you can see the population, you can see the sample, you can see how the researcher collect data. Maybe the uh, researcher also uh, report to you the findings, the significance of the study. That will be the report of the past studies, which is common in many journal articles. Now there are also. Um, Many journal articles that uh, the writers, journal article writers, only uh, uh, publishes articles on uh, in the article. Uh, it's a concept paper, so they only discuss concepts and they end up with their own concept. And some articles, uh, some journal article writers also present different theories. All right, they may come up with a conclusion of their the synthesized theory. So there are many different types. So I, I use the uh, theoretical, uh, the articles on theories in general articles and conceptual papers to help in my theories. All right. I also uh, will use articles from past st studies, but um, basically is the one on theories on concepts, concepts that are very helpful, actually. All right. Okay, what a literature review is not, okay? Um, uh, I've often um, feel very exhausted when I read um, my, uh, I read some academic writing or my, my supervisor's first draft of literature review that has, that begins, that, you know, every other sentence begins with, according to this person said, this study said, this person reports that every other sentence begins with that. And the whole literature review has got names everywhere. Well, it's good to cite uh, experts. But doing that looks as if the whole literature review is like a narrative, uh, 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 a narrative summary of what people say. Uh, I've, I've, I've said some uh nasty comments like uh okay fine you you did a lot of gossips in your literature review this person said this this person said that this person said this this person reported that it's just gossips so i would say they said this you said what okay when all these people have said what's your say all right so it is not an annotated bibliography where you summarize briefly each article that you have reviewed no it is not just a summary of what researchers other researchers have done. No, it is, but it is not just that. It may contain summary of a research, but the focus is not what each uh, each and every one of the research did. As the focus is what uh, uh, the focus is is not what previous researchers do. It's it's your keyword. This is my suggested 
a content page for your literature review. The introduction, again, just like the chapter one, the introduction is written last because the introduction later is just one, one, of one or two paragraphs just summarizing what your literature review contains. Right, it's not repeating, but getting the getting the reader ready as what to expect in your literature review. So you write that last, right? Okay, then you uh, there are two, three basic sections there besides the conclusion. You have the theories by experts, and the theories is actually broken down into the keywords. Remember our title one and title two. Title one is about online learning readiness, and title two is about about work stress, all right? So remember the keywords or the variables. So the theories here would be theories by experts of the first variable, the first keyword, theories by experts related to the second keyword and so on. And then the second section is the past studies. Okay, past studies will be the, where you have, you report on the researchers' re, uh, methodology, uh, instrument use, um, um, uh, data collected, data anal analysis, and, and also the findings. Okay, and you would also have the theoretical framework of the study. Uh, the theoretical framework of the study, some people, some writers would like to have it at the top. Some people, before all the theories and the past studies, some people would have it at the end. Um, it really depends not on the writer, it depends on the topic, all right, on the structure of your theoretical framework. We'll talk about it later. All right, uh, let's take one example, all right, okay? Um, the two examples, just let's recall the, the two examples that I've used. Let's look at the first example. Online learning readiness among lecturers at faculty X, university Y. This was the first title I gave in the first chapter, right? Okay, so uh, how do you prepare for literature review? All right, now the 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 main keyword here, the main variable, uh, uh, looks like the main variable is only online learning readiness, but it's such a big keyword actually. So how do you prepare? All right, for, first you prepare for the theory section. You have to prepare two, 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 uh, two sets or two levels of preparation. The first level is the first level is to prepare the theory section, and the second uh, level is to prepare the past study section. Okay, first section. How do you prepare for the theory section? All right. The first one is you can read books. You can read non-research articles like just know the conceptual paper, theoretical papers. You can read concept papers and all that. You read them. Maybe you should read. A few first the first rounds read a few and get a sense of the categories that can come under online learning readiness you need the categories you cannot leave it just as online learning readiness there will be a few readiness and and if you sit read a few actually if you read carefully you can already come up you can already list a few categories of online readiness Keep these categories as a guide. Write it somewhere clearly. Label it. All right. Okay. Uh, read uh, once you have the first round of categories. Okay. Let's say online readiness. Uh, that uh, it could be uh, online readiness could be um, uh, uh, the online teachers readiness could also depend on number one. Maybe, for example, all right, I'm giving you three examples. Online readiness could be the uh, one, one is the students reading the students online, uh, on online readiness themselves. And number two will be the materials. And number three could be the teacher's training. All right. So after you label and you get the category, so one will be the S students. So the other category will be uh uh, materials M and the other category will be uh, um, T training. Okay, you have these categories. Then you start reading further. Number two, read more articles this time and label the articles. Each time you see articles, you label it. Okay, okay, this one is M. This one is S. So you would have like two or three for a start. Maybe a few articles for S, a few articles for, for M, a few articles for T. Okay, maybe minimum of two. Don't just get one. All right. 
So maybe you have uh, for a start you have two four articles for S, two articles for M, two articles for T. All right, then check to see that you have a few articles. Yes, not just one. Okay, then you are done. You are done preparing for the um prepare preparing for the materials for the theory section. Now you need to prepare the materials for the past study. It can be the same materials up there. It can be a different set. All right, but now you. Label you focus different now. You have established the category. Maybe now the label it can be the same articles as now, but this time it has another extra label on top of the article. Just now you already have S, so now will be R dash S. That means research on S. Then you can have M. There's no motivation, but now it's R dash M. So you have uh, you have a minimum of maybe two articles on research for student, two articles research for motive uh, materials, and the other one research for research for um, training. All right. So that will be one preparation for the first title. Let's try another title. All right. So how do you prepare for the what is literature review? This is my, um, this is my uh, interpretation of each section, each uh, each uh, discussion. Uh, you compile previous work by other research, but presented. It's not presented based on the researcher. It's presented based on the topics. Just now we have the keywords. Remember, you don't need to summarize. You need to compile. You group your articles based on common topics. We did that just now, right? We've got two articles for each keyword, right? Or each category. What does it mean by compilation based on topic? Let's try out this diamond format uh, with keywords. Wow, very nice diamond, right? My diamond paragraph format, okay? Um, smile when you hear how I describe my di diamond. It's one paragraph. Okay, this diamond symbolizes one paragraph. You begin the paragraph, you say before you write things in the paragraph. So you say before you say it. Then in the middle, the broad part of the diamond, then you say, you elaborate the points. And then last is the sharp part. The sharp part of the diamond, then you say what you have said. Again, let me repeat. Say before you say it, the top part, the top sharp part. Middle broad is then you say it. Then the bottom part is then you say what you have said. Mm, a bit crazy. Let me give examples. Okay, let's say this is the literature review write up plan. All right. Um, uh, the introduction doesn't have a diagram. Actually, the introduction is an inverted triangle from broad to general, and it describes what the whole literature review will contain. All right, and theories by experts related to keyword one, and then the second two point three also it's supposed to be one diamond. Two point four is another diamond. Two point five is another diamond by itself. 2.6 is another diamond by itself. 2.7, one diamond. Or you can have two. But later, when you understand the concept of writing within the diamond, then you can break up diamonds when you have more uh, points to add on. All right? When you find that one diamond is too long, you can you can then break up your diamonds. But in order to in order to break up diamonds, you must understand the concept of one diamond first. Then you have, finally, you have the theoretical framework. One paragraph for theory of one keyword. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to write one paragraph for the theory section. Remember just now we had the theory and you have another past study section. So now I'm going to teach you how to do one paragraph for theory of one keyword. Read a few articles on the first keyword. Just now, I asked you to do that. However, even one keyword. Okay, now, even for one keyword just now for, for example, coping strategy. All right, you can't have a paragraph that talks about anything and everything under coping strategy. Coping strategy itself must be subdivided so you can focus properly. All right. Um, 
can be subdivided, maybe two or three subtopics. When you, well, you can choose to write the whole paragraph. You can choose to write just on coping strategies, one keyword. But then a paragraph will be on about everything and anything. And in the end, it's just touch and go points of each elaboration. The points will be very, uh, very shallow. You just talk about it in general, but not giving really elaborate examples. Because it's so general, you only talk about one keyword up, up there in your paragraph. So next stage is to learn to synthesize. Now, compile a few articles that support. Now, how do you write? Let's try. Sounds difficult, but it's not. All right. Let's look at our first title just now. Online Learning Readiness Among Lecturers at Faculty X. Um, this may not be the best example, but, you know, I'm giving you just a general idea. Okay, now you have your title. Then you go and read up articles to get the categories. All right, so let's say I read up and I get categories. Oh, I see, you know, it's like, oh, past researchers said online readiness. When lecturers uh, think about online readiness, they need to consider students' engagement. And then uh, uh, the lecturers also need to consider the materials. And the lecturers also need to consider training. All right, okay. I'm not going to talk about the whole thing. Let's zero in on one key uh one keyword student engagement just now i tell you uh, just now remember the previous slide i said try to subdivide one keyword because one big keyword is just too general so now i from one keyword students engagement i subdivide this student en en engagement and okay ask yourself how student engagement uh, what type uh uh, what do you mean by student engagement? All right. So when it comes to student engagement, perhaps the their online needs and perhaps, perhaps number one, and perhaps number two, their motivation towards learning online. This is an example. All right. Okay. So then in the next column, uh, I'm going to concentrate only on one paragraph on student engagement. I'm going to concentrate in that paragraph. I will only talk about student engagement specifically on their online needs and motivation. So therefore, that this student engagement becomes one paragraph. How to write? Okay, 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 okay. You must be, uh, uh, you must be frowning now. Okay, okay. Now I understand the the concept. How do we write? Okay. Going back to the online, uh, the student engagement just now. Remember online and motivation. All right. Now, what does what the, what do you actually do with my diamond? The first sentence of the paragraph gets the reader ready for what the paragraph will contain. Remember the top top sh top sharp section of the diamond. The first sentence there. Now, this actually in academic writing is called the topic sentence. This sentence gets the reader ready as what the whole paragraph will be about. Say before you say it, all right? So you elaborate this topic sentence, um, saying what the topic sentence are. Uh, maybe you want to say the two subtopics. Let's say you have two subtopics, online and motivation. The next few sentences cite from sources uh, of uh, cite from sources to support the first uh, subtopic, and the next few sentences cite sources to support the second subtopic, and you must. Close the paragraph. You must close the paragraph by reminding the reader uh, what the paragraph was about. The last paragraph wraps up what the paragraph was about. Okay? So, it's the concept of say before you say it, then you say it, then you say what you have said. So, again, what you write. The first worry. Uh, this is an example of a topic sen sentence. The first worry among lecturers for online learning readiness is... Student engagement issues. Now, this is a topic sentence of the paragraph. This paragraph is going to talk about students' engagement issues. But that's too big. Which may come from their two sub, two sub points here. From their online needs and may affect their motivation to learn. Notice how I have the main idea, the sub points in one sentence. It's actually a top topic sentence and supporting details. Uh, topic sentence and um, that is the main topic sentence and that one is actually the uh, uh, the supporting the, the supporting 
details for the paragraph, all right? So then the next few sentences, look at the color blue. You only write few sentences with citation to support online learning. You're actually uh, um, organizing yourself. Finish off all the elaboration on online learn learning first, all right? And later you, f you continue with uh, elaboration on motivation. Uh, the last sentence wraps up this paragraph. It's a sentence that will say, uh, so, the worry, you can, the worry that lecturers uh, among, uh, the main, uh, the worry that lecturers have are regarding engagement issues. You can just uh, write the last sentence by mentioning just the topic. All right, okay. So, this is one example for um, uh, the paragraph, one keyword paragraph, one variable paragraph for the first title, online learning. Let's try another title. Now, the second title is the relationship uh, between leadership style and coping strategies on job stress and job satisfaction among employees at company X. Now, if I was going to do this, this uh, literature review, it's like an essay, right? So, I know all the keywords there, job stress, job satisfaction on the, 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 the left column. I have all the four main ideas, the black points there, all right? Okay, the four main I ideas there, all right, okay? Uh, then the four are job stress, job satisfa uh, satisfaction, leadership style, and coping strategy. So I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do all. I'm just gonna choose one. So let's say I am gonna write a paragraph for coping strategies. All right. So coping strategies. Okay. Let's say uh, I'm very ambitious and I found three strategies in different articles. I got so excited. I found three. All right. For example. So that will be one paragraph. All right. Okay. Let's go on. Now, one paragraph for each va variable. So again, uh, there the di diagram is on the diamond there. Say before you say it. Then you, then you say it. Then you say what you have said. All right, okay. So, um, so remember just now, uh, coping strategies will be the main idea. So you have the main idea. You can't just be talking about just the Coping strategies, anything and everything, no. So let's control, let's control the main idea. So we control the main idea with three sub points, three controlling ideas. All right. So the controlling ideas are coping strategy one, coping strategy two, and coping strategy three. So the first topic sentence, the first sentence will be next. Employers need to have their own way to cope with the stress through. So cope with the stress will be the main idea okay then you have the controlling ideas the sub points through coping strategy one blue color coping strategy two red color and coping strategy three green color so then you expand the broad part of the diamond you expand few sentences with citation what do you mean by coping strategy one how is it done who said that then you have a few sentences of coping strategy two who said that? How is it done? What do you mean uh, to? What does it focus on? And then finally, few sentences on coping strategy three. Then you close the sharp pointed part of the diamond. The last sentence wraps up this paragraph. Okay. If you decide, if you find that coping strategy one and coping strategy two is too long and strategy three, you want to break it up into another paragraph, can but in order to break up into a new paragraph remember then now the coping strategy three becomes the main idea and it needs to be supported in by on its own so you need subtopics under it so then you can build further uh, diamonds from the from other paragraph if you understand the concept of each diamond i think you have no problem breaking up uh, paragraphs that are too long you can't just cut it and bring it down okay each paragraph needs to uh, answer for itself if i can say that each paragraph needs to have a topic sentence expand and closing so each paragraph itself again when you break it down each paragraph itself must be say before you say it then you say it expand 
then you say what you have said. You can break up paragraph, but you must follow the same rule. So, uh, so then your 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 paragraphs are are nice and comfortable to read because every paragraph makes sense. Every paragraph you see the link. All right. Let's go on. So now we are done with the theory part of the writing. So now let's look at how to write past studies. You already collected your articles on past studies and you put R coping strategy. R, you know, you have R in it. So you take about maybe two, two if you have for a start, maybe two, two research. Um, uh, you can combine two or three researchers in one paragraph. How do you do it? It's a bit long, but it's going to be interesting. Right? So the first sentence, again, say before you say it. Then you say it, then you say what you have said. So the first sentence gets the reader ready for what they will read in the paragraph. So you will, it's actually the common finding. It is not the researcher's name. It's a common finding. Maybe this common finding will be coping strategies. So it's reported by, then you can mention one researcher and the next researcher. So the next paragraph uh, next sec section, you summarize uh, um, what was the research about, what was the instrument, how is data collected, and what's the findings uh, for the first researcher. Then the second one, the same summary of the research for the second researcher. Then the last one, you wrap up what the paragraph was about. So this is one way of doing it. Although, uh, it is really okay if you uh, have one paragraph, uh, one paragraph mentioning one researcher because sometimes researchers write in a very, there's so many things you want to report by the researcher. The methodology is very long. The finding is long. You want to report so many things. So that one researcher can actually be given a whole paragraph. But the paragraph, again, try as far as possible to follow the say before you say it was the main idea first. Then say, then you say it, expand, then say what you have said. So try to follow the diamond format. So we are done with the theories and the past studies. Maybe you want to take a break here before we go on to the theoretical framework. Maybe a five minutes break and pause. Okay. Right, theoretical framework of the study. This is uh, the last section, second last section before the conclusion, actually. Uh, this is theoretical framework of the study. The theoretical framework is the structure that can hold or support a theory of your study. It introduces and describes the theory which explains why the research problem under study exists. The use, why do you use it? It's, it's used as a guide in your study. Uh, it plays an important role in guiding the entire research study. Theories are constructed in order uh, to explain, predict, and master phenomena. Theories are also developed by researchers to, you as a researcher, to explain uh, and draw connections and make predictions. They are based on existing knowledge. Therefore, it research. Remember, I spoke, um, you know, um, uh, remember the first section of your literature review, they're all theories. All right. Okay. So that's why. And also, this is, uh, this is a very important stage to remember. That's why it's very important when you want to come up with a title for your research. It's something that many people have done. So you have lots of theories to back it up. All right. So you want to evaluate theories uh, relevant to your research. You explain the key concept of the exist existing theory and you look at it. All right. Uh, you analyze it. A strong theoretical framework shows that you have chosen a particular approach to answering your research question. It also provides a clear basis for interpreting and understanding why you need to do your research. It explains about the re relevance of your findings later because this, the theory was this. All right. Next one. How to develop a theoretical framework? There are three ways that you can follow. Three steps. Number one, identify your key concepts uh, with uh, variables and keywords. That's not very difficult anymore. I hope you have got the hang of it, the variables and the keyword uh, style format. The first step is to pick out the key terms from your problem statement and research questions. That would be your keywords. 
or your variables. Concepts often have multiple definitions. Yes, that's why you have many different theories at your first part of your literature review. So the theoretical framework involves clearly defining what you mean by each term. You define by different researchers. You, maybe you need to look different on one particular keyword. You need different definitions. That, okay, let's look at one sample here. Uh, company X is struggling with the problem that many online customers do not return to make subsequent purchases. Okay, so they are worried that people don't buy again. Many much management wants to increase customer loyalty and believes that improved customer satisfaction will play a major role in achieving this goal. So you need to investigate this problem. In order to investigate, you I have identified and plan to focus on the problem state uh, following problem statement objective and research question so many online customers do not return that's the problem to increase so you want to increase the customer ro ro loyalty and thereby generate more revenue so the research question would be how can the satisfaction of company x online customers be improved so that's your question there that's why you want to do this research in order to increase customer loyalty so what's your theoretical framework then the concepts of customer loyalty, you will get a few concepts and you come up with one. You will dis you will explain why you come up with one. Normally, the customer lo lo loyalty here will be a, 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 a synthesis of a few theories of customer loyalties by different writers. And then, so the concepts of customer loyalty, your concept, your version, concept of customer satisfaction, are clearly central to this study. So the theoretical framework should define these different concepts, these concepts, and discuss the theories about the relationship between that. So that's one. All right. Next thing to consider, define and evaluate relevant concept, theories, and model. Remember the first section of the literature review, there are lots of theories, concept models. I asked you to talk about concepts, theories, by conducting a thorough literature review. If you if you have different theories by different people on one keyword, that would be very good. That's thorough. You can determine how other researchers define and draw connections between the concepts. Okay, you can see how different people define these keywords that you have identified. And write the theoretical framework. Aim to compare and critical, critically evaluate the approaches that different authors have proposed. Right. Remember the concept, uh, the the idea that I said to my supervisors, they say this, you say what? Because you want to be able to write what other people have said, maybe report, then you have to come back to. So what's yours? What's your take? Number two, after discussing different models and theories, you establish the definitions that best fit your research. Now you zero in. This person said this, this person said this. Now I'm going to use this. All right. And justify why this is the case. In more complex research projects, you might want to combine theories from different fields to build your own unique framework. You can combine after coming up, reading a lot, you know, summarizing, read, write, writing about a lot of the different theories. Make sure to mention the most important theories related to your key concepts. If there is a well-established theory or model that you don't want to apply to your research, explain why. Or explain why you use a, uh, another past research model, but you improvise it. Why you are improvising it. Also interesting. Next one, how to develop. Uh, number three, show what your research will contribute. So the final part of your theoretical, uh, final part to consider before you come out with your theoretical framework is after you've read what previous theories are, the concept of the previous, and you, you know, you say, okay, I'm going to, con I'm going to use this. Uh, this person said this, this person said that, but yeah, I'm going to combine what these two people say. I'm going to come up with my own one and you justify why you combine. All right. Then the next one is your part. Apart from discussing other people's theories and ideas, the theoretical should, framework should now aim to show how your own project fits in. Okay. Uh, okay. Fine. You've come up with your own version of the theory. Will you test a theory uh, of people, of other people, or contribute new evidence by collecting original data? All right, maybe you want to improvise it. Will you, will you test the theory? Or will you use the theory as a basis for interpreting and understanding your data? Will you analyze or you critic challenge established theory? Can also, you can establish somebody's theory. You can critic and you can, and you can, you can challenge it by trying it out. Will you combine theoretical approaches in a new or unique way? Then you can come up with your 
own theory, but your theory is based on your past reading. So you cannot come up with your theory, but it's just a narrative. It should be based on uh, ev evidence. If relevant, you can also use theoretical framework to develop hypotheses or your, for your research. A hypothesis makes a testable prediction about the outcome of a specific study. Well, a theory is in hypothesis is what you predict will happen. But a theory is explaining why certain things happen. This means you can use a theory or to determine, you can either use it as a theory, A, or can use it to de or determine what to expect to happen next. So that's what your theoretical framework. Okay, with all that in mind, how do I do it? Some writers, there's no hard and fast rule about it. Some writers have a special section at the beginning. It can, it need not be at the end, what, what I showed you just now, a uh, theoretical framework. You can have it at the beginning of your literature review or at the end, it's up to you. Some explain the theories in the section. That's the theoretical framework. Just sections, subsections to explain the theories and why you came up with the theory, how you got the theories. What's, uh, what did you combine it uh, uh, from? What do you take it from? Okay, where do you take it from? Or some people begin with a diagram to show the relationship of the theories that leads to the your the objective of your re research. So it, it could also be in a diagram, but remember, the diagram doesn't speak for itself. The diagram needs uh, below the diagram. You should need to explain a little bit of what the diagram uh, is trying to portray. Okay, All right. So what else? A good uh, literature review should have a, a good introduction. It's good to have still an introduction for your literature review. And it's good to have a summary. It's good to have a summary for your literature review. Uh, all right, let's look at the plan. All right. So let's summarize. All right. Um, you can have, um, you can have, you can... In, in summary, uh, number one, you must synthesize. You must learn to synthesize. Read from a few and come up with your own categories. Come up with your own subcategories. Synthesize. Group them together. Synthesize. Combine. Then after that, remember my tip of say before you say it. Then you say it. Then you say what you've said. Then I gave you the literature review plan. And each paragraph best its own shape okay and finally the whole actually the whole literature review is a diamond by itself the introduction tells the reader what to expect in the whole literature review then you expand in in many diamonds then the last conclusion or the summary of the literature review is actually the uh, it tells the reader remember remember what i said just now in the literature review okay uh, again let me show the headings, all right. Uh, just to uh, recap, all right. Uh, this is my diagram of the introduction. So you have the 2.1 introduction, what you plan to say. So it should be from general to specific, and the introduction should contain information of what the literature review will contain. All right. So you're getting the reader ready to to ex what re ready uh, and and know what to expect in your all the diamonds, all right. And then you say it and elaborate and cite. All right. Then you have one diamond for 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and so on and so on, so forth. And you have the theoretical framework. It doesn't carry a diamond because it's by itself. All right. And finally, you have the summary. Say what you have said. And it's um, wrap up and then you expand. All right. Okay. So that's the last uh, that's the whole um, um, plan for your literature review okay um, we have we've come to the end of uh, the section on literature review let's uh, recap uh, number one um, um, I've taught you how to write the theory sections of the literature review and I've also taught you um, how to write the past study section. And I've also given you some tips on how to go about uh, coming up and writing the theoretical framework. All right, so you can try. So good luck and thank you for listening.